If you're one of those investors out there that's looking to do seller financing as an investment strategy because you can't qualify for traditional financing, this show is for you. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. Jay Wise, Holton Wise TV, MLS Search and Analysis Show. All right. That's where you're at. What we do, we help people like you invest in real estate. We do a lot of stuff. We flip houses. We get you wholesale deals, buy and hold, short-term rentals, the whole shebang. We show you the deal. We analyze the deal, and my team handles everything, property management, maintenance, construction. We even do insurance for any landlord in Ohio. If you own a rental property in the entire state of Ohio, hit us up. We'll give you a quote. I can almost guarantee you we could lower your rate because that's all we do. Don't ask me to insure your boat. Don't ask me to insure your Lexus. It's not what I do. I only insure rental properties. Now, on to the matter at hand. Today, I'm working with my man, Tim. Tim, you are an investor, and you cannot qualify for traditional financing, okay? So what you got to do is you got to focus on seller finance deals. And you come across a deal where a seller is willing to finance you, and the finance terms are quite nice, okay? They are willing to finance the deal for you. Uh, at 6% interest with 10% down over 20 years, okay? So the way things are going to shake out, you're going to need less than $10,000 to get into this deal, right? But is the deal going to make money, right? Let's talk about that right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into the numbers on this seller financed deal, right? 16102 Talford Ave, Cleveland, 44128. 99900 is the list price. It's been on the market for 56 days. It's a nice house. And it's a nice neighborhood. I like this neighborhood. It's like a, you know, C-grade neighborhood in Cleveland. And we got a nice little bungalow right here, dude. All told, it's pretty much turnkey rent ready, dude. They went with the gray walls, the white trim, kitchen. I probably would have done something with the cabinetry, but it'll work, okay? It's pretty much rent ready. We should have no problem getting a tenant in here for a G, right? Now, the pictures are a little fuzzy. Don't shoot the messenger, right? I'm not the listing agent. I just present to you guys the deals probably need to do some cleanup in here looks like they came in here before they cleaned up to me that just looks like stuff that could be vacuumed if that is stains we would have to spend like a grand replacing the carpet in there but more info on that will come out as we do the home inspection right i'm only looking at things i'm looking at what you're looking at right so uh, the home inspector is going to definitely get into this property and go over with a fine tooth comb that roof looks to be pretty new to me right but let's talk more about the strategy. Let's talk more about the deal. Let's talk more about the numbers, right? Because th there's some some things we have to talk about here. As far as the neighborhood, though, let's just make sure we get this out of the way. Neighborhood, solid. C grade, shouldn't have any issues. As far as the numbers of actually picking up the property, though, that's where things are going to get a little dicey, okay? Like, this is a great Section 8 neighborhood, dude. 1000 bucks, easy, Section 8. Probably, possibly, even get it up to, like, 1075 because uh, it's nice and spacious. It's fresh. But here's where we got some things we got to talk about, and you got to make some decisions, okay? $99,900 is what the seller is asking for. The seller's also willing to finance it at 6% interest with 10% down over 20 years. Folks, seller financing is 
freaking bee's knees, dog. Seller financing's great. I've got several million dollars worth of several financing, uh, several finance mortgages out there, right? You could really build up your portfolio. It's really great. It's great for people that uh, can't qualify for residential financing. It's also great for people that exceed their mortgage count, right? Your typical residential finance uh, borrower, right? Portfolio, so to speak, right? Unless you're a husband and wife and you're splitting it up so you can get 20. You get 10, right? And you want to definitely take care of your own home first, right? That leaves you with nine mortgages. So what do you do after you use those nine mortgages? Well, a great thing you can do is focus on seller financing. Which, by the way, folks, if you go to HoltonWise.com, you click the property search for sale tab and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see you can get direct MLS access. Click that for 50 bucks you can get direct access to all the seller finance deals in the Cleveland market the moment they become available. You get alerted automatically the moment I get alerted, the moment any of the other realtors in this market get al alerted of the seller finance deals, you get them direct to your inbox. So I'd probably check that out if you're interested in seller financing. That's not 50 bucks a month, by the way. It's a $50 one-time fee. So long as you log in every 30 days, that will be live forever. Now, Assuming we can rent this for $1,075, let's look at the highest possible rent, $1,075. That would be $12,900 a year. With the terms the seller is offering you, right? 20 years, 6%, 10% down, a $99,900 purchase price. This is actually going to be a cash flow negative property, all right? You would not cash flow. You would lose like $100, $150 bucks a month, something like that, right? You'll have to run the numbers, okay? The best numbers you can put forth that are going to eke out a little, a little teeny weeny, a little teeny weeny profit for you would be if you bought it at 90000 okay? You buy it at ninety, and then you got to convince the seller to finance you for not 20 years, but for 30 years. And instead of 6%, they would finance you at 3%, okay? If we did that, right, if you take your rent, and then you take in your fixed and variable expense estimates. You should have a clear NOI of approximately 4514 on average every year. So with the, the 90K purchase price, the 10% down, we keep that in there. You only got to put up nine grand. The seller would write you a mortgage for 81 Gs, but you can't do it at 6% interest and you can't do it over 20 years because you would be cash flow negative. You'd have to get the seller to kick it out to 30 years and cut the interest in half. Doing so would give you an incredibly modest cash on cash return of 5%, right? You're just squeezing out a teeny weeny return of 35 bucks a month on average, right? So here's the question. Should you do the deal? Is it worth doing the deal for only a 5% return? It's up to you. I think probably, but here's the thing. What you have to understand is if you take two people, you being the buyer, the other person being the seller, I think it's, if one of them's going to not do the deal at those terms, I think it's probably the seller, right? I don't know if the seller's going to gonna do the deal, right? They, they want to get paid out in 20 years, and they want double the interest. So I think it's probably a long shot to even get the seller to accept our terms, which is super teeny. But what we have to understand when you're trying to do the seller finance strategy, and this is what I think a lot of people on the Internet don't tell you, right? A lot of the other gurus, they talk about seller finance this, seller finance that. It's so great. Look, here's the deal. You want to sell or finance this deal because you can't qualify for a bank to finance you, okay? Let's be real. Beggars can't be choosers, bro. You're not a good borrower. You're a bad bet. I mean, that's just how it is, right? If you can't get financed through a bank, banks are in the business of financing people. Banks make their money. Mortgage originators make their money by issuing loans. If they have determined that you don't qualify, they can't make money off you. You're too big of a risk, this, that, the other, right? Uh, or, you know, I guess in the case of people that exceed 10, you know, you can no longer get the government to insure them. Like, it's tough, right? It's tough. So you kind of got to take what you can get, right, in situations like that. If you picked it up at 90 under my terms, 30-year uh, note, 3%, you're making minimal money, but you got to look at the flip side of that. That's an $81,000 mortgage, that you didn't really deserve. You couldn't have got that $81,000 mortgage any other way. And guess what? You don't got to pay back 
that $81,000 mortgage because the tenants are paying that back. So are you going to go out there not being able to qualify for residential financing and find all these amazing cash flow deals at discounted rates to put all this cash flow in your pocket allow you to quit your job? No, that's not practical. The only people telling you that are people that are going to sell you an education course about seller financing secrets, and then that's it. They're done, right? In the real world, you have to understand most sellers aren't going to issue you those terms and things of that nature, right? So you got to look at turning a little something out of nothing, right? Turning lemons into lemonade, right? Turning chicken shit into chicken salad, okay? You have the opportunity to get 81 grand that nobody else is going to give you, and then you have the opportunity to have your tenants pay off that debt. So this is something that would work for you in the long run, right? You can't look at things in a vacuum. You have to understand your situation, and you have to be honest with yourself. Like, hey, what do I as a borrower bring to the table? What do I bring to that seller, right? Because if you're trying to get a discount on the list price, right? If you paid 99 or 90, both of those are probably an inflated price point for this property. But it's tit for tat, right? If you want to come in and get it lower than the ARV, any motherfucker will give this guy cash if it's lower than its actual value. So why the fuck would he take the flyer on you to finance you, right? Why would he withhold getting paid today versus 30 years down the road, right? You have to you have to look at all that. Don't look at these deals in a vacuum, right? So my opinion, if you can get the seller to accept the terms I have presented in this video, you are way ahead of the eight ball. You may even, you may even want to consider accepting the seller's terms knowing that you're going to be cash flow negative, right? Because if you did the seller's deal, You'll be cash flow negative if you paid 99 over 20 years at 6%. But look at it this way. What if I said, hey, man, do you want to own an $80,000 asset? If so, you just got to pay like 100 bucks a month. Well, you already can't get financing from a bank, bro. So it's still probably a decent idea for you. But you have to look at it at the long haul. And you have to go into it understanding, hey, this is not something that's going to replace my current living expensive, right? This is a long-term investment for my future. I'm trying to hop on, control an asset, add to my net worth down the road, possibly hop on the appreciation train, things of that nature. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.